Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's uh, continue with uh, Tory Rebellion Morning. We're doing a ser service for you by doing a survey. Let's go now to Bristol, where we're joined by the Conservative MP for Plymouth, Johnny Mercer. He's concerned about the changes to the personal independence payments. These are payments that go to disabled people to help them be able to move, help them to get through their lives more easily because of all the extra costs that can be incurred if you are disabled. Mr Mercer, um, what's your complaint about the, what the government is planning? Uh, Andrew, you're going to have to come back to me because I've got a different voice coming through my ear, not you. Really? What kind of voice is it? Well, you sound like a lady, actually. Well, the operation's only halfway finished, so it'll probably get better as we go. But you can hear me, can't you? Uh, I can loosely. Could you just turn... There's another voice in my ear and I can't hear Andrew. Oh, oh hold on. There we go. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll just give... Can you hear me now? How does that, that sound? Down there. Nope. Yeah, I can hear you, Andrew, but I can also hear three other different voices. But, yeah, we can go for it. Let's, uh, look, look, we there. don't want to do that. Let's try and see if we can sort that out, Mr Mercer, and we'll, uh, we'll come back to you on that. So don't go away. We're gonna, our finest technicians are on it as we speak. Uh, is there a kind of mood of um, rebellion on the Tory backbenches at the moment? Uh, partly sparked off because you're going your separate ways on the referendum. I think there's a lot of open debate. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the same as rebellion. Um, I think there is, uh, you know, people are looking at a few different things. You talked about the budget, as I say, that this is why I think it's wider than just a budget. We are actually looking at uh, the European referendum, how it, how the European decisions affect our budget, mm. affect our funds, our finances. So that is quite a fundamental issue. You're absolutely right. But I think. Um, the 2015 intake and certainly the 2010 intake before us are independent thinkers. I don't think we're just necessarily uh, uh, party apparatchiks, but nonetheless, we do know that the fundamental thing, as I said right at the beginning, that, uh, uh, you know, we're not serial rebellers. Like, uh, that doesn't really get you that far, you know, if you're seen as a serial rebeller. No, but also people don't Apart like... from Jeremy Corbyn, obviously. People don't like parties that are perennially divided. Uh, and... It could, if, it's a, if this is a bitter campaign, and it's been quite bitter so far, it may be more, even if the Prime Minister wins the referendum, it could be quite difficult just to return to business as usual. Frankly, I think it's, you know, some of the uh, things in the periphery, the personal attacks, the perf personal uh, things, the uh, driven um, uh, debates are something that we just don't need. This is a really, really important um, decision for the country. It's going to affect us for the next few decades, uh, and that's why we've got to concentrate on the issues. Is it not surprising, uh, uh, Trevor Kavanagh, that having had to retreat on making, essentially, cuts on tax credits for the working poor, that he would not have been a lot more careful in what was being planned for the disabled? I mean, if you have to retreat for the working poor, and you then want to take on the disabled, um, maybe you need some new advisors. I think so. And also the presentation of the 2.2 million billion that uh, is saved on the, on the uh, uh, savings on the PIP mm. and the 2.2 billion being spent on uh, middle class uh, tax breaks is so neatly discernible that it just makes people think you know, they're robbing the, rich, uh, robbing the poor to pay the rich. And that just doesn't go, go down well. Mr Corbyn's been given an open go, hasn't he? He has, yes, and I think he's. Ha that's why we've seen him have, have his best, probably, best uh, week since he's been leader. And doing not badly in the polls. Doing not badly in the polls. I mean, I think any Labour member who takes that too seriously would be wise to remember sure. Ed, Ed Miller. But it helps. It, it also means that uh, he's there. I mean, when you're doing like that in the polls, the, the parliamentary party is running out of reasons, excuses to mount a, a, a coup against them. Yeah, I, I never thought it was that likely, just no, because of the scale of the victory and, and, and what a two fingers it would have been up to the people who joined the party. And it goes back to the electorate that chose him in the first place. Absolutely. But you're right. I mean, I think this solidifies his place. I think he's, he's not going anywhere. And, and he, well, the one thing I thought very interesting with his budget response was, as much as what he said, was how he said it. And, it, and, and Jeremy Corbyn, just because he's been around for so long, is so comfortable in his skin, believes what he's saying, he sounded so 
are confident, whereas mm. usually a leader of the opposition, as we all know, that's the toughest speech it's to give all year. It's the toughest It's not your, your field of expertise. It's, um, it's something you're, you're not dealing with day in, day out. But you have to respond to a budget you've not had any pre-sight of. And he, he spoke it was very well. Badly leaked. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Most but of <laughs> was coming. But okay. I thought I've always said that it would be a mistake to underestimate Jeremy Corbyn. Mm. And I think that actually I watched his uh, budget response and it was pretty good. Lots of people derided it, said it was uh, knee-jerk stuff, but I thought he handled it quite well. All right, let's see if uh, lines to Bristol are up without interference. Mr Mercer, can you hear me clearly Hello, now? Andrew, and does it I sound like you. me? It sounds like you. Well, I apologise for that, but let's proceed nevertheless. Uh, what's your beef about the government's changes to payments for the disabled? Look, I just think we need to be really careful. We're dealing with the most vulnerable group in society, um, you know, the bottom 20% in terms of vulnerability. Uh, and when we're talking about dealing with PIP and stuff like that, this is their lifeline. We've got to be really, really careful. We've got to get it right and we've got to get the message right. Um, but at the same time, we, you know, we have to accept that there are, um, th this is an ongoing fluid process. There have been judgments in the last uh, 18 months which has made um, PIP claimants go up by, um, you know, treble in that time. Um, and we need to maintain our sort of ability and our agility to work with that and make sure the money is going to the right people um, so that we are looking after our most vulnerable um, and at the same time encouraging those who can work into work, which is what this government was elected to do. But uh, no, I, I do have concerns about it. I think whenever we're dealing with um, the, 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 the most vulnerable in, in our communities, we need to be really careful. We really need to communicate the policy um, properly because it can be enormously worrying. The, the PIP payment is a real lifeline for a lot of people in Plymouth. How widely are your concerns shared by your Conservative backbench colleagues? Uh, I don't know, Andrew. I just got in from Washington last night. Um, I saw this come out in the budget uh, and obviously anything like this, I'm going to look at it very clearly and interrogate it. I'm a compassionate Conservative. I don't know any other form of conservatism than that. And when this sort of uh, policy comes out, I want to really interrogate it and have a look at it. Um, and I was concerned um, and, and I am concerned in terms of how we communicate this properly. But I'm not going to stick my head in the sand and say we just walk away from a problem uh, where there may be abuse, where there may be duplication uh, and say, look, we don't have time to fight that fight because we have to mm. if we're going to make sure that we are um, giving our, our, our most vulnerable people as much uh, money and support as we can and as they deserve. Um, but of course, you know, in dealing with the most vulnerable groups in society, we need to be very, very careful and we need to work a lot harder to communicate what we're doing to those groups. There is some abuse. Uh, I've seen evidence of that. Yeah. But I've also seen that it's de minimis, uh, that the money lost in fraud uh, to pe people making claims that they're not entitled to is, is peanuts in the overall yeah. scheme of thing, and that indeed the bureaucratic inefficiencies of the department in handing out uh, these benefits uh, costs more money than whatever is lost small as it is through fraud. Yeah, Andrew, I agree with that. There's, you know, there has been a lot of work in this area um, and um, fraud and, and, and abuse of it is minimal. Um, and, you know, you, you've got to balance that with the policy as it, it was first presented, uh, or, or certainly in, in the media, was that PIP was just going to get taken away. And if you can imagine you're on PIP, that's going to be heartbreaking. And it's going to, you know, it's going to cause what, what we've seen. I think we just need to calm down and look at exactly what this policy is. And if but, there are little tweaks we can make to, to, to better improve the care for our most vulnerable people, we should do that. But at the same time, we must work hard to make sure people understand we're not um, adjusting most people's um, payments. You know, and those who rely on this, this government is spending more and more uh, on disability. We have to be fair to them. Um, you know, the, the budget this year is £50 billion. Pounds. It's £34 billion pounds on defence, so we are prioritising this correctly, but we need to be very careful if we're dealing with these groups. But according to the IFS, uh, the several hundred thousand, it may, it may require, Mr Mercer, more than a tweak, several hundred thousand disabled people could either lose their disability payments altogether or see them cut quite substantially, and that would be a cut that would matter a lot to these people because they're not on that much. I mean, when disabled people, even when they get to work, they rarely get paid the full market rate. They're, they are generally on low levels of pay. You take away a bit of the uh, disabled payments they get, that's going to cause real pain to people 
who I would suggest are already suffering enough pain. Andrew, you're absolutely right, and, and um, you know I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but I spend so much of my time uh, working with these groups. I'm in it for that 20% that we need to look after and for who life is really, really difficult. I see this. I work in Special Olympics as veterans charities that have you know, been ringing my phone ever since this, this came out, you know, talking about this policy. I absolutely get that. We just need to be careful with project, uh, projections um, and what it actually means. If there's points coming off someone's PIP assessment, that doesn't mean they're going to lose money because of the way the cliff edge system works with, uh, with PIP assessments. It, it is very technical. Um, but look, this government is committed to looking after its most vulnerable. The Prime Minister has said that. Um, and, you know, and I would welcome people to come to my surgeries in Plymouth or wherever that may be if there are our most vulnerable who are being disaffected by this because, because that is not the intent and we need okay. to do better as a government to get that across. Johnny Messer in Bristol, Paul Scully in London, thank you both for joining us this morning. Now, naturally, we asked for the government uh, to give us someone we could speak to about this, either from the Treasury or the Department of Work and Pensions, but none was available, not even the Downing Street cat. Hmm.